Hello everyone, welcome back. I got a lot of really good ones for you today. But first, I hope you had an awesome week and you have an awesome weekend. Markets. The three major US stock indices have moved up substantially this last week or so since I've done a video. Reason for that, falling yields. Falling yields, falling rates, falling dollar sends risk assets like NASDAQ, gold, oil, and Bitcoin higher. Rising yields, rising rates, rising dollar sends risk assets like NASDAQ, gold, oil, and Bitcoin lower. Been seeing a little bit of that inverse relationship these last few weeks. About a month ago, when that 10-year yield shot up to 3.5%, that put NASDAQ down in the gutter at 11,000, Bitcoin down in the gutter at 19,000, gold down in the gutter at 1,700, oil down in the gutter at 88 a barrel. Since that time, though, that 10-year yield has been moving lower again, pulling back, and that sends those risk assets higher. So the 10-year yield falling back to 2.6, 2.7, 2.8% where it's at right now, that's allowed these risk assets to recoup some of their losses. NASDAQ to go back to 13,000, Bitcoin to go back to 25,000, gold to keep moving up, oil to get back there into the 90s. A lot of people are saying not so fast. These are bear market rallies. The lows for all these asset prices are not in. Deflation's coming, higher yields, higher rates are coming. A bigger fight and effort from the Fed to get inflation under control is coming. So look out below for real, real estate, NASDAQ, Bitcoin, oil and gold. I'm saying no, I'm not in that camp. I'm in the camp that the lows for the year could potentially be in as long as the 10 year yield can stay below 3% and maybe even move lower, the NASDAQ, Bitcoin, gold, oil, real estate can all take a stab at all time new highs. Reason for that, even if the Fed continues to do baby bumps with regard to interest rates, the backdrop of inflation will remain much worse. There is no Paul Volcker coming to the rescue to raise the Fed funds rate above the inflation rate, effectively breaking the back of inflation. We have a global inflation phenomenon problem going on. It's forcing the Fed and all these central banks to get stuck at really low interest rates. So even if the Fed promises you that they're gonna roll off their balance sheet and jack up interest rates, they're only gonna be able to do those things assuming the ECB, the European Central Bank, the BOJ, the BRICS countries can come along for the ride and have their economies uh, withstand substantially higher interest rates and yields. And, and I don't think they can. So now that the world is kind of getting addicted to low rates, low yields, terminally high inflation, that to me is gonna send risk asset prices and inflation a lot higher in the coming months and years. So I think 91 WTI crude oil, where we're at right now, 91 a barrel, I think that's closer to a bottom than a top. I think Bitcoin at 25,000 is closer to being at a bottom than it is at a top. I think the NASDAQ at 13,000 is closer to being at a bottom for the remainder of the year and next year than it is a top. In gold, I expect to continue to do the cost of capital too. So as the dollar weakens in absolute terms, I expect the gold price to continue marching higher as a function of these massive Fed balance sheets and massive debt bubbles just not being deflated and poked and burst and liquidated. I see the Fed balance sheet remaining inflated. Maybe they'll roll it off a little bit. They have been this last few months. If you Google Fed balance sheet, you can see what their, their balance sheet looks like. It has been um, coming down this last few months, but I don't think nearly quick enough to match or defeat the backdrop of inflation that we have here. So I don't see the Fed moving aggressively or acting uh, effectively enough to stop inflation in its tracks. And what that's gonna look like is ultimately inflation remains a sticky problem globally for all government issued fiats. No Paul Volcker comes to the rescue to jack mortgage rates up to 21% and interest rates up to 16% to stop inflation. No Paul Volcker shows up. Paul Volcker can't even show up if he wanted to, none of these Fed, well, rest in peace, Paul Volcker has passed, but he is a well-respected statesman and Federal Reserve chair that broke the back of the 1970s and early 80s inflation. And he is not coming and nobody 
like him is. So I don't think we're going to have a hawkish Fed. They've been talking a big game the first six months of this year, but I expect them to tone down their rhetoric. And I think the markets think the Fed's ultimately going to capitulate to broad sustained inflation as opposed to jack up interest rates to the point it destroys their uh, financial system. So the Fed will protect the, the benchmarks, the stock indices, the real estate prices, the system at the expense of the middle class inflation and a weaker dollar. It just kind of is what it is. I don't see Paul Volcker come to the rescue. I will be the first to let you know if I do think the Fed will start doing 1% interest rate hike. You know, basically the Fed is not, is not going to show up to this inflation problem and fix it Paul Volcker style. And if the Fed doesn't do that, then inflation is gonna stick around and that's not gonna make asset prices in my view go lower. There's this PSYOP out there that if inflation gets bad enough, the stock market will crash. I don't think it works like that. I think as inflation gets bad enough and you get absolutely decimated at the pump in the grocery store, your stocks might be going up 20 or 30% with it, but it's just keeping its value and doing its job. Those stocks aren't performing really well in the face of strong fundamental developments. It's not alpha, like you ripping the face off the market guessing which derivative is going to steal the most market share and be successful. As a matter of fact, a lot of these companies stock prices, which I believe will keep marching higher, might be even in a worse situation than they are today in another six months from now. But that doesn't necessarily mean their stock price is going to suffer. Their stock prices, just like gold, just like Bitcoin, just like a piece of real estate, it's going to do its job and keep its value in the face of a massive currency devaluation. And that mechanism, the Fed's unwillingness to deleverage the system, allow things to crash. The Fed's unwillingness to do that will ultimately affect the middle class, the small businesses whose profit margins have been decimated by inflation and will continue to be. And, you know, the, the birth of a two tier society. So I don't think they're going to square up to this economic recession, this two quarters of negative GDP growth that we've just been through. I don't think they're going to face off with that and lead from a position of this is where we need to go as a country and this is how we're going to fix the inflation problem and we really mean it and this is how we're going to get back on an even keel. I think they're just going to change the definition of what a recession is, lie to you about how awesome things are, especially with uh, elections coming up, tell you that they're going to shrink the Fed balance sheet but don't, tell you that they're going to raise interest rates but drag their heels on it, and then just keep lying to you about how strong jobs are even though the job number <laughs> even though wages are collapsing in real terms meaning for every 15 percent inflation that hits the economy you get a five percent boost to your wage yeah keep playing that out another few years and you'll find that your wage is collapsed in in real terms by about 30 or 40 percent and that's what you're seeing so you know i don't see massive crashes Median home prices of 400K where they're at right now nationally for single family uh, homes in the US. I don't see them crashing from four, where they're at now, 400K a pop, down to 200. I see them, if anything, doubling again and then uh, you needing to make like $200,000 a year US just to be middle class. Maybe not quite 200,000 a year, but how quickly is 100,000 a year starting to become a middle class income? And what does that leave for the people that are still making 50, 65,000 a year? When a new truck costs 60,000, when a new home costs 450,000. So that's the crash, that's the collapse, that's the squeeze. And it doesn't manifest itself in crashing asset prices, it manifests itself in crashing yields rates in a dollar, terminally high inflation, really high asset prices that you can't really buy as much of because your wage isn't keeping up and you're being priced out of the market. So that's just kind of the problems I see and the dynamics I see at play, but I could totally be wrong. We're just gonna have to see and we're just gonna keep going, all right? But that's just kind of what I'm seeing right now. So, you know, really do spend some time focusing on that inverse relationship between bond yields interest rates in the dollar and risk assets and how when the 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 things tied to the dollar are moving up and making the dollar really strong it really trashes those anti-dollar plays like gold and bitcoin and on the flip side of that when the dollar ends up getting much much weaker than the market could have ever anticipated those risk assets go up 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 
So, you know, up is not good, down is not good. Prices just are kind of prices. It's all relative to how much your wage can keep up with it, how much your small business can keep up with it, and what the backdrop of your inflation is. That's really what decides how you navigate this brave new world. And to me, it doesn't look like higher interest rates and yields structurally going forward. It looks like terminally low interest rates and yields, which is what you've been getting for well over a decade now, and just keep the beast system alive, inflate or die by any and all means necessary. So just kind of what I see, totally be wrong, kind of hope I am, and, and you know, with regard to some aspects of my paradigm, but again, we'll just have to see, watching how things play out. I'll be back for the next video. Like, subscribe, comment. Thanks for all your support. I hope this kind of helps you at least understand where I'm at, not a buy or sell recommendation for anything, but just kind of what I see going on. That's all I got for right now. Till next time.